no, Republicans expect to pick up seats in this midterm election. The party not in the White House usually does. Nine battleground states are likely to determine if the GOP takes control of the Senate for the first time in six years. CBS News political director John Dickerson is here, along with CBS News contributor and Republican strategist Frank Luntz. Good morning and happy Election Day. Yes. Hello, so, John, um, <laughs> let's talk about tonight. How likely is it that Republicans will win the Senate? Well, it looks like that's it's likely, but we're all used to surprises in politics, so I feel danger, it's dangerous to even say that. But every Republic, every Democrat I'm talking to, I got an email back this morning, somebody uh, who said, well, I would be lying if I said it looks awesome. Uh, so <laughs> it's euphemisms, but they're not good ones. Uh, but, so go ahead. But Frank, so it, it looks likely, but you say you shouldn't take it as a mandate. Why? Well, CBS did a poll, and they asked the question, is this election about Barack Obama for him or against him? Mm -hmm. And a plurality said it's not about Obama at all. In the work that we've done, it's actually an anti-Washington vote. It's an anti-incumbent vote. And one of the things that no one's been talking about are the governor's races, because that sets up 2016. That's how you determine the future of local and state politics. Republicans are in danger of losing several major gubernatorial races today. And so while I am convinced that they will win the Senate, I think that Florida, for example, could go Democrat, and that's significant. But Gail's point was, will the people who are elected and coming to the Senate and the House have a mandate based on this election? Well, everyone, that was my point. Everyone <laughs> defines, and we all have the and, right and in a, thank you, in a free country. Thank you, You did not address country, that, Frank Luntz. We all have a right in a free country to ignore the point to get to what we actually want to exactly say. Right. Exactly right. Which is also the message. Right. Right. And I plan to Poli exercise that right. <laughs> Much uh, like the politicians running. The, the problem is... Yes. The, the problem is that they will say they have a mandate, but do you have a mandate if, let's say, you get to 52 seats in the Senate? Mm -hmm. That's only 52. Is that really a mandate? I think what the public is saying, because a lot of incumbents are going to lose, in fact, more Democratic incumbents will lose tonight in the Senate than at any time since 1994. That's going back 20 years. Mm -hmm. In the end, it's whether they will make the commitment to work with the president. And in the end, that's what the American people want. They want to get things done. There are two attributes in our polling that matter more than anything else, accountability and get things done. So they better listen to yeah, that. I mean, the interesting, Nora and I talked about this. The interesting question to me is the dynamic after the election yeah. between the president and the Congress. Mm -hmm. We're going to, we'll have a moment. And one of them is going to have to grab it. Who who makes the olive branch? Exactly. Who takes yes. the olive branch moment? If for no other, you could be terribly cynical about this and say you want to be seen as extending the olive branch because you know in the end it's going to be a big fight and you you need to kind of look like you weren't always girded for a fight. But there will be an interesting dance if if Mitch McConnell becomes the majority leader. How he and the president yeah. interact in that and, first time. And isn't it more likely though that the president though is about to come out with a series of executive actions that may anger the Republican? Control? Controlled Senate and in House, for that matter, especially on the issue of immigration. Well, he said he would, and yes. that's an, uh, that's if you want to poke so the what new. Kind of, what kind of olive branch is that? Right. Well, it's an olive branch to the eye, uh, which is uh, which is uh, <laughs> never good. Yeah, which is not a good way to start the conversation. But does one side do you think need to extend the olive branch more than the other? Does one side look worse here, or is is, is it as you say, yeah. Frank? Everybody looks bad. The best example is 1995-96. More things got accomplished with Bill Clinton in office and the Republicans in the majority of the House and Senate than in any two-year period. They were able to cooperate and get things done, even though they fought. But, but also, they had a mandate based on the contract with America. <laughs> at that time. And I mean, I saw, I was involved in it. Now, but we mentioned the House. The other story that's not being told is that Republicans are nine seats away, which I think they could get to tonight, nine seats away from having the biggest majority since 1946. In the House. In the, in the House. House. In the House. Right, right. So this is significant. How likely is it we will not know until December mm. or January? Who controls the Senate? Yes. Well, we'll know. It, 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 yeah, I think, yeah, well, it's possible. I mean, if there's a runoff, there's going to be a runoff. Or just possible? Uh, oh, Charlie, you're pushing me too hard. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we got all thing. these races clattering yeah. around. We barely I, know what I day think it we'll is. Know, we could know around 9, 10 o'clock, because depending on how New Hampshire and North Carolina, if it's a big Republican wave, then no, we won't have to wait. If it's tight, and the Democrats hold on to those. Right, but we, we've also seen that these races have their own particularities. And yeah. so wave may not, you know, it may break on the but, East Coast but, by the time we get yeah, to the but, West. But the point here is if you could have a runoff in Georgia, you could have a runoff in Louisiana, and you could have something happening in Alaska where we don't know right away. We, right. Not, we, when you come tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., I do not, I believe Republicans win the majority. 
But at 7 a.m. tomorrow, when you go back on the air, I do not think that will have been declared because of those three states that you mentioned. And how likely that the pollsters are wrong? Hello, Eric Cantor. Nobody oh, predicted he would yeah. lose. The, pollster, Nobody. the Republican pollsters in 2012 are way off okay. predicting Mitt Romney. So I would tell you one thing for every viewer to remember. Don't trust the pollsters. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Coming from a pollster. Coming from a pollster. <laughs> okay. I've been trying to make that point for a long time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Frank Lund, John Dickerson, thank you.